as an early for Justin dance. What? Yes, yeah, so it's a long distance call. Please bring him to the line. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, May eighth, twenty fifteen. This is episode zero zero four of our weekly talk about e-commerce and technology. With us, as usual, from New York City, is Bart Moraz. Hi. And way down there in Alabama, Justin Nance. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. And me, John Suter, coming from Philadelphia. Uh, so how's everybody feeling? I am dealing with a bit of an allergy situation, so I'm going to try to struggle through this. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about the pollen tsunami that's that's hitting the Northeast. Um, and I was pretty much immune to it until two days ago. Now all I want to do is sleep and sneeze. Yeah, that's not fun. I'm starting to, uh, many years I've never had allergies. It is starting to hit me. And that sounds awesome. I was, you know, I kind of laughed at everybody else. You know, my son, he gets it pretty bad. And I was just like, hey, you know, I used to get allergies, LOL. Well, you know what? Karma kicked me in the ass the other day. And it's not good. I mean, the pollen's so bad around here, I could write my name on the top of my car. Yeah, Northeast gets it like crazy. It's such a weird, weird thing. <sighs> oh, God, right. you must get so much pollen in New York, in New York City. It must be <laughs> yes. terrible. Tell me about it, guys. Jesus. Yeah. Well, how, is it, how is it down there? It is, you, you, it's like, it's like walking out in the middle of a dust storm. Like, you can actually physically see it floating through the air. Well, I would think because, and I don't want to get into a whole weather discussion, but since it's generally warmer down there, doesn't doesn't that start earlier for you guys and you don't get it all at once, or how does that happen? It did. It started probably probably two or three weeks ago, and it was just absolutely awful. Like, you park your car overnight, and in the morning you get in, and it looks like a volcano erupted. You actually have to use windshield wipers to clear off the windscreen to see. Okay. And it's kind of died down in the past couple of days, but it's still it's terrible. It's awful. It's like that here too. Like you might laugh at in New York thing, but yeah, it's the same. <laughs> what is it coming through? Oh, the tunnel? Does it come through the tunnel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know we have this. We have this park in the middle of this. Oh right. Island. I thought it was. I thought it was artisanal hipster uh, Brooklyn pollen that would fly over. No, no, no. That that has to. That actually has to walk over the bridge. That's <laughs> it's got to walk over the bridge. I'm, artisanal. I'm pretty sure Uber's been delivering it. Yeah. <laughs> Small batch. Small batch. <laughs> All right, you guys want to get started? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, a little, little follow-up from last week. Uh, we were talking about Elon Musk and the Tesla Powerwall. Uh, apparently, they got 38,000 pre-orders and are sold out until 2016. They were sold out like first few hours. First few hours. So, that, you know, from what I read, they're not the first ones to do this but apparently they're the first ones to do it right. And I think, do you think that the fact that it's Elon Musk and that it's got sort of that cachet, that good design cachet, you think that has a lot to do with it? Yeah, I mean, it looks great. Uh, and if it does what it's supposed to, I mean, you know, the other side of it is it, uh, his brother owns Solar City. So it's kind of like, you know. Right, the energy mafia. Yeah. I mean, for, for what it's worth, I actually had this older redneck fellow that, that's a friend of mine came up to me and was like, hey, man, did you hear about this fellow, Elon Musk? He got this battery for your house. So if these guys know about it, I, I, I don't know. It, it, might, it might become a phenomenon. You got one of their batteries. You're going to stick it on your house. You can watch Game of Thrones right on the TV. I mean, it was more about NASCAR, but that's pretty close, yeah. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. won the race last week. I saw that slingshot at the end. <laughs> <laughs> let's, keep this, uh, let's keep this on topic. Uh, our first topic of the day. Uh, Justin, this is the one that you found. The plastic card. I love it. I love it. All right, so a little background. The plastic card is one of those uh, cards that consolidates all your credit cards and your membership cards and your loyalty cards into one electronic card that you keep in your wallet. And it's you basically uh, pair up all of your, your cards through a little dongle they give you. That's what she said. 
and <laughs> carry this card around. And as long as you've uh, correct me if I'm wrong, do you need the phone to work with this one or can this one operate on its own? No, it can operate independently. And I can tell you what I love about it and what really sets it apart from coin is that it has a full length, um, oh, uh, e-ink display on the bottom of the card, right. which is fantastic because it shows you your full card number and all that, but it's also a touchscreen e-ink. So it allows you to do a couple of different things. First off, you can set a pen on your card so that no one can use it. I mean, you actually have to type in a password to use it. Uh, secondly, it can display barcodes. So I know down here, a lot of loyalty membership programs use barcodes. I like to scan those things rather than swiping a card, yeah. which is fantastic. Um, it also has a lost mode so that if you lose your card, the e-ink display says this card has been lost. Please contact so-and-so, so-and-so to return it, which is great. Um, and it allows you just to, Bluetooth where it just disappears from your phone or something like that. I think so. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Most likely probably once you get it out of range or something. Coin locks theirs if it's farther away from the phone, basically. Yeah. So the problem with Coin and Stratos is that everyone's moving towards this EMV standard, the chip and pin standard, but apparently right. this plastic does operate with chip and pin, correct? Yeah. It does, and it has NFC built in, so you can use it for that's NFC cool. door card readers and that's Apple, cool. well, not Apple Pay, but yeah, it's, it's really a cool device. Yeah, I mean, so Coin uh, ordered it like for 5,000 years ago, still not here. You know? Yeah, I heard it's launched, launching soon. Yeah, like 5,000 years ago and still not here. Uh, my buddy Jesse got it. It's kind of cool. He's like used it once or twice. It doesn't really, I don't know. He's more. So why, does, so why does he like it? Because I, I would love to hear, you know, a use case of consolidating everything into one card. I, it just didn't work. It didn't work. In oh, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. Unbelievable. Mm. And then, I mean, well, plastic supposedly, plastic, they're pre ordering now for 149 I think it is. Yeah. And they're promising deliveries mid summer this year, I think. So, if they can actually meet that deadline, it looks like a fantastic product. It certainly looks good. Yeah, I don't know. I carry two cards, and that's about it. I'm okay with it. Yeah, you know, I think. <laughs> I'm the kind of, I'm the crazy guy that has 50 loyalty cards on his keychain, but I only carry two cards as well. So uh, well, you need stuff. I, I have an app for on the phone and I'm happy with it. It's fine. Great. Yeah. Yeah. But say you go on vacation and instead of having to stick that annoying room card somewhere and you're always losing your room key. I don't know about you guys. I'm always losing the room key. You just, if it's NFC, you pair it. If it's swipeable, you just swipe it and store it and you've got it all there on one card. Yeah, eh, not everybody works at <laughs> one. That's a problem. Uh, that's all right. We'll all be using Apple Pay in a, in a year anyway, so this will be all conversation. All, right. all Bluetooth, boom, done. Right. right. I'll have the chip. Speak for yourself. Um, my, my wife got stranded at the gas station the other day because she left her card at home, and, and they had never even heard of NFC or Apple Pay or Google Wallet or, you know, anything other than cash so the nfc is that near the kfc <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on uh a is it nashville fried chicken <laughs> nashville fried chicken <laughs> all right next we're going to talk about jet.com which is an amazon challenger uh started oh. in Downtown Montclair, New Jersey. Uh, the guy who started it was the former CEO of diapers.com and was acquired by Amazon for $550 million. So he had to work for Amazon for a few years. So uh, this guy is a real e-commerce expert. Um, they're gonna, they're, their business model is a whole sh wholesale shopping club. So they're going to undercut everybody by 10 to 15% and make money on the membership fees. Yeah, it's like Costco. Same thing. Costco, that's Costco, why they're Costco online. Uh, yeah. That's why they win. I mean, they win every time, right? So they're, they're, they're perceived as <clears throat> membership money, and that's about it. That's how we roll. I'm just wondering how they're going to, you know, what, what's the ceiling for, for memberships? When, when, like, how, does, how does that continue to grow? It's like Costco. Oh, hey, the guy... 
the, the guy made 550 million off diapers. Let's, uh, I mean, my, my instinct says nobody can really compete with Amazon, but I mean, hell, the 550 reason, million off. The reason he had to sell to Amazon was because, I mean, he was killing it selling diapers. I mean, they were making. Uh, well, it was diapers, soap.com, and uh, pets.com, whatever the three were. There's three of them that right. he had. Right, it was that umbrella company. And what happened was Amazon said, oh, this guy's killing us in diapers. We're going to take a loss on diapers. And they, they basically they basically killed him on price. Right. Um, so, so, he, so he took his $550 million and walked away. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I mean, I wonder what they're going to do. You know, are they going to ship it out of their own warehouses? Are they going to do it out of their own? I mean, they raised a ton of money for this thing. It makes sense in a big scheme of things, but well, they've raised eighty million dollars from four VC firms, and they had something uh, when it first launched. They were if you promoted the site, they would give you shares, stock shares. Did you get any emails, Bart? I didn't even see those things. Uh, I did, and I signed up, and I am I'm actually on the list, but unfortunately, they only opened it up to the first hundred thousand, and I'm one hundred and sixty-four thousand on the list. <laughs> Because I wanted to take a look at the site, but it's still locked down. Right. So if you think about it, you have it, it's a big PR move in the beginning. You know, two hundred thousand people sign up in the beginning times was it fifty bucks <laughs> a year or whatever that is, or one hundred fifty dollars a year, whatever that is. Fifty so bucks a chunk, you know, off the bat. But right. You first ninety days for free. So that's like you know, it's give you a little taste. Right. So you still um, have nine months to play with. To pay out. I mean, how many people are going to drop off? How many not? I mean, it's, it's more of this, the Costco thing, right? In New York, it's a little harder. You know, I don't want to go to Costco and get, you know, three billion toilet paper things because it's just not going to fit my apartment. No, and if they, could, if they could match the shipping, like my Prime account, which, you know, now it's 100 and whatever it is, but I still use it a few times a week. I mean, right. if they could match the shipping, you know, this could be a Prime killer. Yeah, no, uh, Prime on the, yeah. on the big stuff, like, you know, people buying value type of things, right? So buying the big, huge laundry detergent stuff, right? Typical Costco thing. It's really just a comparison to Costco. <laughs> the right. So, I know, you know, how many, you know, bottles of water do you need in, in, in the pantry? <laughs> right. <laughs> Buying toilet paper online. That's right. It's something. like how many how many gallons of uh, laundry detergent do I need? Actually, none because I have nowhere to do laundry in my apartment. So, <laughs> I mean, but a lot of people like, especially like my wife's guilty of this. She'll order like thirty rolls of, to of toilet paper. At, well, no, thirty rolls of paper towels and like fifty rolls of toilet paper at once for the discount. Don't ask me why. I don't get it. I don't get it, but. She does. Fine, so I get it. Once you run out, there's two things you can never. There's a couple of things in life that you can never order too many things of. It's razors, paper towels, toilet paper, and if you have kids, diapers. You'll never. You, you'll never regret ordering too much of any of that thing unless you don't really have the money to do it because you're, you're always going to. You scotch and hookers didn't make that list. Yeah, well, scotch and hookers too. That's like. <laughs> And Scottish hookers, especially. <laughs> hey, how much? Oh, I know, that's my Irish accent. Hey, Tatera, what you want to What you roll in the hay? Moving on. Let's roll in the hay. Okay, Facebook opens up internet org to developers. Uh, I'm a little gray on this one, so if you guys want to carry the ball on this. I put a little notes there. It's, it's basically uh, providing internet access to uh, people who don't have it for basic things, you know, ordering things and, and paying their bills and stuff like that online. Hi. Like this guy? Hi. <laughs> you, sir, are special. You have <laughs> I just have Comcast. So I, I'm, I'm considered a third world country, right? So Justin is like the fifth world country? Is that what yeah, it is? Fifth world. Yeah, I'm way out there. Way out there. Way out there. Uh, it's, you know, it's news. Um, people are like, oh, you know, we don't want to use it because Facebook will track us, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a utility. At the end of the day, it should be a utility. So it says here... <laughs> They offer free access via mobile mobile phone to pare down web services focused on job listings, agricultural information, healthcare, and education. 
as well as Facebook social network and messaging services. <laughs> no, no. Even though you're poor, we're still going to collect data on you. Right. So, you know, since you have to get a job, we should probably also get you on the social network too. Right. Your, your, right. your, uh, your farmers only will not work, but. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get your selfie as your harvest. That'd be over. actually really funny. If they like give you access to farmers only and the weather for and uh... <laughs> Justin will share his account with you, I'm sure. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Married man. Oh. Oh. Bust on him. Exactly. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. PayPal wants you to inject your username and eat your password. So that was oh, when I read that first headline, I was like, what? Eat my password? I I what? <laughs> And this is kind of a futuristic thing, but uh, one of the research guys from PayPal did a presentation called Kill Your Password. Um, and basically, you know, they want to see not only pass PayPal, but the world move toward more biometric ways of of logging into things. Um, I mean, if That's you look at that presentation, it's you know, because... It, a security is just so bad. People, you know, like you read every day. Oh, oh, I got hacked. But then you look at the top passwords. You know, people are still using passwords like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and Password. love you, Password. and let me in, and sunshine, and it's your dog's name, your kid's right. name, and all those fun things. That reminds me, I have to change my password. <laughs> Seven percent have the password. Password. 5% have the password 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 40% have, the pa have a password from the top 100 of the list. And 91% have a password from the top 1,000. So how hard would it be to, to be a hacker, to, to, to get into somebody's no, time? It's not hard. It's you really know, it's not, I could probably do it. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much, sir. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's already here. So a lot of laptops already have biometrics in them. Obviously, your iPhone has it built in already because that's your password, um, it's here, it's coming. It's just they want to do like eyeball things. And An injectable, injectable, like something you eat. Yeah, I don't want to do that. That's okay, I'm okay with that. There's plenty of, you know, my, my fingers so are you, what if you What if you, what if you eat it and it gives you some other, other side benefits, you know, like uh, long lasting, you know, you know. <laughs> What about you poop it out? What if it made you a better? What is that? Like you get logged in somewhere down the sewer? <laughs> <laughs> get new meaning lost yeah. my, I lost my password. I lost my password. But I literally went lost on. my I password. I actually shitted it out and it went down the stream. <laughs> uh, that's terrible. That is so terrible. the future of hacking is going to be a uh, gorilla. You're just going to go up and replex someone's eyeball out and, and access their account that's the that's the future <laughs> well, I mean, it, all, every movie says that right so i mean yeah, yeah uh, it it like, i don't know all right moving on and we have the product of the week which is microsoft launched this little site last week called how old dot what is it how old dot net how uh how dash old dot net how dash old dot net uh, I tried this. It was actually, and it was. I, I tried it on a photo from a couple years ago, and it got it. It nailed it. And then I tried another photo, and it said I was 84 years old, and I got really sad. And then I closed the window. <laughs> uh, mine went from like 28 to about 46. You know, with the beard, I'm wondering what age it's going to put me at. I haven't tried it yet. All right, try it out. But if it returns like 112, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> so people are all up in arms because they think that, that, you know, they put their baby's photo up there and now it's going to be used in Microsoft advertising. Oh, um, it's Microsoft bad. says that they're not keeping the photos uh, because, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Privacy and stuff like that. I, I mean, they're trying, but that's, it's so dumb. Like every foot I've tried, it tells you different age. It's all over a place. It's not even like... It's a funny gimmick, but yeah. What's the practical use for it? None. None. No. None. Well, there is actually. I think what they're trying to do is tells your age by your like features and what your face looks like type of thing. But problem of that is, 
you know, Justin, you shave your beard and get a short haircut and you look, you know, a lot younger, right? I do the same thing. I get a really short haircut. It's the same thing. John, you have the same thing, too. We, we all do, right? I wonder if there's not some, some hidden agenda there, if they're not test Because, you know, the, the Microsoft Connect now has pretty good facial recognition. As Are we all frozen? Yeah. Sorry. He's still there. <laughs> Not sure who that was. Just keep recording so I don't have to splice it together. Wait till yeah. it comes back. It's fine. I'm not sure who dropped. I think Justin. Broke. That's all right. One day in time. And now Justin does. We're calling a long distance. Person to person. Person to person. Oh, Justin. Hello. Hello. See if it dropped off. Nice to on. Well, at least he waited to the end. Uh, right. Right, right. So Justin decided to just leave. So we lost Justin. Uh, and it's a good thing because it happened right at the end. He uh, he is getting you. Uh, oh, 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 there he is. Oh, there he is. We forgot to feed the squirrels. Justin, I did. Uh, Sorry about that. That's okay. No idea what happened. So you were about to say something prolific about your beard, and everyone was waiting. They were hanging on the edge of their seats. Oh, oh, yeah. That's actually where the squirrels live most of the time when they're not running the internet. <laughs> they hide in your beard, in your full woodsy beard. <laughs> so I think this concludes our uh, fourth episode now? Fourth episode. Yay. Oh, they grow so yeah. fast. Yeah. So fast. Right. So fast. Always want to wrap it up? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll see y'all next week. Have a great weekend. Peace. Peace out. Peace.